The 2022 Farnborough Air Show was supposed to be a moment of triumph for the aviation world. The show was being held for the first time since, and it brought some big orders and spectacular flying displays. But despite the fanfare, many Airbus loyalists walked away with a sour taste in their mouth. During the show, it was announced that the A350 was being updated, and seemingly not in a good way. Specifically, its cabin's been redesigned to accommodate 10 seats per row, up from the 9 abreast layout that's common today. In a world where airlines continue to pack more and more seats onto planes, the A350 has been a revelation. It's remarkably roomy, even in coach. But now, Airbus appears to be caving to the high-density trend, and sacrificing comfort in the process. However, I'm here to tell you that reports of the A350's demise have been overblown. I flew all the way to Airbus's headquarters to try out its new 10 abreast setup, and I can confidently tell you that it won't impact the flying experience in the ways you might think. And in fact, a 10 abreast A350 could be a really good thing for passengers. Let me explain. Now, before hopping into the video, I'm sure you've noticed that airline stocks have flatlined. Airlines run at slim margins, so shares often falter when they face a tough economy. But today's shaky climate is affecting more than just airlines. Goldman Sachs thinks that stock-heavy portfolios will underperform in 2023. When this happens, many people look to store their funds outside the stock market. And according to Deloitte, 85% of wealth managers see fine art as a viable place to do so. Enter Masterworks, today's sponsor. Masterworks buys up expensive art and breaks it into smaller, affordable shares through the SEC. This isn't crypto or NFTs. This is actual fine art from guys like Picasso and Banksy. In the past 26 years, fine art's appreciation has outpaced the S&P 500 by 131%. And so far, Masterworks has made 11 exits for an average net return of over 25%. So it's no wonder that 650,000 people have invested with Masterworks so far. Of course, past performance isn't a guarantee of future results, and this isn't financial advice. But Masterworks seems to be doing something right. Demand is so high that they have a waitlist to join. But my viewers can bypass the line. Simply check out my link in the description to do so. First, let's talk about what's changed on the A350. In late 2022, Airbus debuted a new production standard for the jet. It features a number of incremental improvements, including a weight reduction of 2,600 pounds and an MTO increase of 6,600 pounds. These changes should make the plane more efficient and also give it the ability to carry more fuel, passengers, cargo, really whatever the airlines would like. But the alteration that's garnered the most attention, and also the most scrutiny, is the plane's new interior. Airbus re-sculpted the plane sidewalls to make the cabin four inches wider. This change makes it easier to fit a 10 abreast economy setup, up from today's 9 abreast standard. And this has a lot of passengers worried. After all, we've seen this happen before. On the Boeing side of the shop, the 777 and 787 were envisioned to seat 9 and 8 abreast respectively. But today, plenty of 777 operators, and nearly every 787 operator, has included one additional seat per row. People have lamented that this makes the jets uncomfortable, and now it seems like the A350 is suffering a similar fate. Of course, this is all just conjecture. Few people have experienced this new 10 abreast layout, and it's hard to judge its comfort without actually trying it out. So I decided to pay Airbus a visit to find out for myself. I'm here in Airbus's mock-up and design studio, standing in a full cabin mock-up of the A350. Airbus uses this space in particular to help its customers visualize and define what their cabins are actually going to look like. Now, this space has been retrofitted with the new production standard and the wider cabin that'll help accommodate 10 abreast seating. These right here are 10 abreast seats, and you can't really tell by looking at it. Nothing really looks out of the ordinary. It looks like normal economy class seating. But just looking at these seats and actually experiencing them are two very different things. So I'm going to take a seat and let you know how different they actually feel. This actually feels a lot roomier than I had envisioned. Don't get me wrong, it's still narrower than a 9 abreast A350, but honestly isn't all that bad. But no matter how you slice it, less space is less space. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you that you won't feel the difference. But here's the thing. 
Airbus doesn't anticipate that every customer will adopt 10 abreast. Alexi Vidal, Airbus's VP of Widebody Marketing, explains. Passengers should not be worried. We have already delivered 500 aircraft, mostly in 9 abreast and some in 10 abreast for the leisure carriers. And the aircraft is delivering fantastic economics per seat already. So what we are doing is improving the choice for the airline to opt for a 10 abreast configuration, higher number of seats, like 30 seats more, and therefore lower cost per seat, which will help passengers to fly in a more competitive way or a cheaper airfare way or to remain in nine abreast and provide more volume to each passenger as a result in a better passenger experience. But no matter what, nine abreast or 10 abreast, the A350 is the most competitive aircraft in the large world with this space and is providing the best passenger experience. You see, Airbus is operating from a position of strength. They've built a hyper-efficient machine crafted of ultralight composites and equipped with the most advanced engines on earth. Like Alexi alluded to, it doesn't matter how the plane's configured. Whether 9 or 10 abreast, Airbus believes it'll outperform the competition. As such, 10 abreast doesn't need to become the default. Instead, it can be used as a tool to make the plane more versatile. Today, the A350 largely serves a single purpose. It flies for mainline carriers on denser long-haul routes. But the new interior turns it into a bit of a Swiss army knife, capable of tailoring its services to multiple market segments. And one customer type that's largely gone untapped is budget carriers. Now, the long-haul, low-cost model has been a tough nut to crack. Many who have tried it have failed miserably. But a Tenebrest A350 offers such exceptional per-seat operating cost that it might just make the model sustainable. This has actually already been proven out in the field. French B, for instance, was an early adopter of Tenebrest A350s, and they've been able to offer rock-bottom fares from the US to France. Meanwhile, Air Caribe has used it to open up new long-haul leisure routes. Flights like Paris to Havana and Port-au-Prince were previously unprofitable, but that's no longer the case. And now that the cabin's better equipped to handle Tenebrest seating, Airbus hopes more budget airlines will flock to the jet. Now, I know exactly what you're thinking. Why wouldn't mainline carriers adopt 10 abreast too? Sure, the A350 might be competitive in 9 abreast, but 10 abreast will undeniably be more profitable. And when have we ever seen airlines put comfort over surefire profits? This is a super valid concern, and the cynic in me wants to think that 10 abreast will spill over into other airlines. In complete honesty, we'll probably see a few mainliners try it out. But at the end of the day, I don't believe it'll become a widespread practice. First off, a Tenebrest A350 has seats that are about 17 inches wide. This is tighter than most economy seats in the sky today, even more so than the 787 and 777. Now, having tested it out myself, I can tell you it's well worth the trade-off if you're spending less money. But if you're paying normal fares, you might not be too pleased. Full-service carriers can certainly try Tenebrest, but they'll do so at the risk of alienating passengers. Plus, there's a better way for these carriers to increase density. You see, Airbus did more than just make the cabin wider. They redesigned the plane's cockpit, galley, and crew rest area while also pushing back the rear bulkhead. All in all, these changes make the cabin 35 inches longer. This allows airlines to add an extra row of seats and generate more profit without making other trade-offs. Another reason most airlines won't go 10 abreast is because they'd be passing up a chance to build brand loyalty. You see, it's notoriously difficult for airlines to truly differentiate. Most passengers pick flights based solely on convenience and price. And while you and I might know exactly which planes are most comfortable, many people have no clue. In fact, the layman couldn't even tell you if they're on a Boeing or Airbus jet. And to be honest, most don't really care. But Airbus is betting that the new A350 will change that. We have a very high net promoter score on the A350 from the passenger, so that's very good, regardless of whether they fly in a high-density cabin or a low-density cabin. The new cabin allows for seats that are 18.7 inches wide. That's more than an inch wider than the 787s. Now, Airbus has another plane that features about that much seat width, the A220, and it's been a smash hit. According to insiders, Delta's A220s have the highest net promoter score in their fleet. All of a sudden, your average flyer is actively seeking out the A220 and the airlines that fly them. The same can now happen with the A350, which will be a real win for carriers. Of course, this is also great for Airbus, since the plane will build name recognition with the general public. Now, I know some of you remain skeptical. You still believe Tenebrest will become the norm. 
So let me share a few additional anecdotes to put your mind at ease. First, like Alexi mentioned, over 500 A350s are already in service. Since these jets have the original cabin, they're unlikely to be fitted for high density. Second, the A350's biggest customers include the likes of Singapore Airlines, Cathay Pacific, and Delta. These are some of the best airlines on Earth. It would be out of character for them to start packing in travelers like sardines. Third, Airbus has already delivered a dozen or so A350s with the new wider cabin, and most of them have been equipped with 9 abreast seating, showing that 10 across hasn't become the default. To sum it all up, it appears most A350s will remain 9 abreast. So what's the upshot here? Why is this so great for you and I? Well, in short, this change improves passenger choice. Either you can choose to fly 10 abreast and save some cash, or fly 9 abreast and savor the extra space. This sort of choice isn't as widely available on the competition. Like I alluded to, nearly every airline flies their 787s in a high-density configuration, and more carriers are converting their 777s too. It doesn't matter if you're flying a 5-star airline like ANA, or a budget carrier like Norse. Odds are, those planes will feel cramped either way. But perhaps we need to take a step back for a second. After all, we're talking about fractions of an inch here. In truth, the passenger experience is about more than just seat width. Things like noise, cabin altitude, bin space, and mood lighting all play a role. And the A350 is a leader in all of those categories. It's the quietest large white body on the market, so we have up to 6 decibels less than a 777 or up to 3 decibels less than a 787 in the premium area. That's half of the sound energy. A second element is the cabin altitude. So the cabin altitude is a maximum of 6,000 feet, but at every single flight level, we would be below competition. And that helps a lot, as an example, reducing the jet lag and feeling much better when you land uh, to your destination. And of course, the LED mood lighting, we have 16 million colors, and that helps airline playing with scenarios about boarding, deboarding, and help you know passengers accommodate to the, the jet lag difference and therefore feel very much rested when they arrive at destination. What's more, Airbus is continuing to innovate. They've converted MSN2, the second A350 ever built, into a testbed for new cabin technology. They're testing everything from overhead projection, to large information-rich video boards, to smart seats. They've even used it to develop dimmable windows, which are making their way onto production A350s very soon. I actually had the chance to play around with these windows, and let me tell ya, they get way darker and dim way quicker than the 787s. Windows are twice as fast, or even 100 times darker than the first generation, and that really is a passenger experience which is unique on the A350. From my time aboard MSN2, it's clear that Airbus hasn't abandoned passenger comfort. Rather, they're actively working to improve it, and odds are, the A350 will only keep getting better over time. At the end of the day, a Tenebrest A350 might seem like a bummer. On the surface, it seems like Airbus is pandering to airlines, allowing them to squeeze as much revenue from passengers as possible. But it turns out that the situation is much more nuanced. Sure, this wider cabin is a win for both Airbus and airlines, but it's also a win for passenger choice. It'll give you more choice in the routes that you can fly, and more importantly, It'll give you more choice in how much you choose to pay for them. So what do you guys think? Would you be down to try a Tenebrest A350? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Thank you so much to Airbus for being such gracious hosts during my visit. I did all sorts of cool things and captured all sorts of awesome footage while I was out there, and you can expect to see more from the trip in future videos. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. And if you want to see all the behind the scenes, in addition to uncut, full-length interviews with Airbus execs, I'll be releasing those as Patreon exclusives. So if you're interested in that sort of content, and want to support my work in the process, please consider becoming a patron. Thank you so much to my current patrons for your continued support, and as always, until I see you again, don't forget to look up.